welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to Dorset. It's the first time I've been in Dorset for a little while. We've done a couple on Weymouth and uh, gone into Portland. I think I did one at Yetminster, did a monthly vlog there. So this is only the, like, the third or fourth video that I've done from the county of Dorset. We're quite close to the border with Devon here. East Devon is just about a mile over in that direction towards the town of Seaton. I'm in the town of Lyme Regis, a beautiful town right here on the Dorset coast. Charmouth Bay lies that way and I'm currently on Monmouth Beach. Just behind me there is the famous cob, made famous, immortalised in literature by both Jane Austen in the book Persuasion, one of the heroines in the book Met an Untimely Death coming off the cob, and also in John Fowle's book The French Lieutenant's Woman. Meryl Streep, the actor, walked across the cob there filming it for that particular film too. So yes, very memorable place. If we've got time, we'll have a closer look at that too. The main reason I've come here today is to have a look at fossils and Monmouth Beach is one of the key points along the Jurassic Coast and I'll tell you more about that in a bit where you can find fossils. So have a look at that, we'll have a little bit of look at the geology of the rocks around here. I'll tell you a bit about that. So we're not join me here again for another adventure on West Country Wanderings here in Dorset in Lyme Regis. Now Lyme Regis lies in a significant part of the famous Jurassic Coast, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The rocks around here date from 199 to 189 million years ago. And at that time, this part of the UK, indeed much of the UK, was under the sea. In fact, it was a warm Mediterranean sea. And it's because of that, because the marine life that lived in the sea then, which has settled on the seabed, the seas now receded, that we have the fossils, the evidence of the marine life from all of those millions of years ago. Now here we have stepped shelves similar to what we saw when we were at Lilstock Beach in West Somerset just before Christmas there. This looks actually quite similar, although the underlying geology is quite different. Now the cliff here that you see exposes horizontal layers of limestone and shales belonging to the Blue Lias Formation. These are the oldest rocks around 199 million years ago. These are hard, pale layers of limestone and darker organic-rich shales, occupying much of the foreshore around Lyme Regis. They appear as a series of ledges at low tide, as we've seen, similar to what we've seen at Lilstock. The beds dip towards the east, some 26 metres thick, bringing younger and higher beds to beach level. Now to the above the Blue Lias formation are the oddly named shales with beef, and above that, black ven moral members. So here we can see swirls of ammonites, quite large examples. Now this area became famous over 200 years ago because of one Mary Anning, and also her brother Joseph Anning, who tends to get forgotten. They started discovering fossils on the beach around the town of Lyme Regis and word spread around rapidly. Tourism at that time had started back in the late 18th century in the town of ross on wye in Herefordshire. It had then spread so tourism had started to galvanise and when word came round that there were fossils on the beach here at Lyme Regis they then descended the tourists onto the town to see what they could see for themselves. Mary Anning and her brother found an Ichthyosaurus, a full length of it. In fact, I think the brother found the head, Mary Anning found the rest of the skeleton. And some of the fossils that they found are now in the Natural History Museum in London.
Like one of the commonest fossil you'll see on Monmouth Beach and indeed at the other side of Lime Ridge is over at Charmouth Beach as well. That makes an excellent walk, something we'll probably do on another time here on West Country Wanderings. The commonest type are ammonites and these are extinct marine animals. They're actually closely linked, they're a type of mollusk, but they're closely linked to things like octopuses, squid and cuttlefish. Now if you were to take a cross section of an ammonite, like slice it through the middle and to be able to observe it, you'll see that it contains a number of chambers and it's how those chambers are linked and how they are shaped and formed that botanists are able to discover or analyse the particular species of ammonite. Now the ammonites that you commonly find in the Lyme Regis area come from the ammonite group Ammonitida, which basically means they come from the period of time between the Lower Jurassic and the Lower Paleocene. Now the ledges of the blue lias are really, really fascinating, the patterns that they make. As I say, it's a mixture of shale and limestone. We have all these patterns that have been wave cut over millions of years. And here on top of the blue lias, you have actually living things, similar to how millions of years ago, you had the mollusks that died and then fell onto the seabed and then they're formed into fossils by compression. You have here living sponges and over a period of time, these two will form into rocks and fossils. head into Lyme Regis now to have a quick tour of the area around the Cobb and the beach area. So why not join me continuing here in Lyme Regis in Dorset on West Country Wanderings. So I've now moved around from Monmouth Beach, come a bit more into the centre of Lyme Regis. Behind me here is the Cobb and of course inside that is a Lyme Regis Harbour. So we're just going to take a stroll upon the Cobb before we have a quick look inside the town centre too. dip over there we're looking out towards Charmouth, Charmouth Bay and Charmouth Beach which is also a good place to look for fossils too. It's good too to see that fishing still takes place at Lyme Regis, much activity in fishermen here. And to that there is the end of the cob. Can't walk any more. Have another additional bit of protection break, a bit of a more of a breakwater there to protect the harbour too. It's like an outer harbour wall. And then you're looking at the rising cliffs there, becoming chalk as they go later on. As it makes its way round the Dorset coast towards Weymouth and Portland.
So now coming down off the cob, we're going to head into the town centre of Lyme Ridge itself, have a look around there and the beach kind of seafront area too. Now walking along the seafront here at Lyme Ridge, it's got this beautiful white sand here too. Sorry, a little bit of shadow, that should stop in a minute. One of the things to note if when you're walking around the town here is the lookout for the street lamps and they'll refer back to something I was talking about on Monmouth Beach earlier in today's video. I've now come into Langmore Gardens and one of the reasons for that, you get a little bit of altitude which affords you a fantastic view right across back to the harbour and to Lyme Regis's famous cob. Now, though it's cold in January, as long as you wrap up warm some gloves, a scarf maybe, maybe pop into one of the pubs, cafes that are dotted along the sea from there, you can warm yourself up with a tea or a coffee. It's very, very pleasant. Of course, it's much quieter than what Lyme Regis is during the peak of the summertime. So you can wander around through the gardens up along Promenade and on the cob without bumping into hordes of other people. really enjoying my day here in Dorset today in Lyme Bridge. As I say, I don't come to Dorset as often as I would like. The main reason for that is it's a bit further from where I live. It's also a bit of a, a tricky route, but I didn't find it too bad today coming this way. So uh, yeah, it's been an enjoyable day and I've been afforded with the most fantastic weather again. Be really blessed for that, although it has been, as I say, chilly. These are wonderful gardens here. As I say, giving you extensive views right back down to the sea and to the harbour. We're just heading out into the High Street area of Lyme Regis, and then I'll take you back over to Monmouth Beach to bring today's little tour here in Lyme Regis to a close. here is Pine House or Pine Lodge and this is probably where Jane Austen came to Lyme Regis on the many occasions and also what inspired her to write the novel Persuasion. Now you can't come to the seaside without getting some fish and chips so I've got some from Lyme's Fish Bar just near the Cobb and they're absolutely delicious. I think I've walked up an appetite for uh, walking around the, uh, the front and also on Monmouth Beach today. So it's been uh, terrific to do that, but uh, very, very enjoyable too. So here we go. Mm. They're really, really good. Excellent. So from this fabulous lookout at the end of the high street in Lyme Regis, I'll take you back now to Monmouth Beach to wrap today's video up. 
Well, that's it for today on West Country Wanderings from the beautiful Dorset town of Lyme Regis. First time we've been back on the sea was the first visit to the coast of 2023 on a fantastic, beautifully sunny but chilly day. It's a high UV today, hence why I was wearing the hat throughout the video in case you're wondering why that was. But yeah, it gave a high UV forecast today. I wanted my woolly hat on really to keep my ears born, but anyway, you can't have everything, can you? So trying to keep the old UV off the old skin. Hope you enjoyed it today. Love to know what you think. If you've been visiting the Jurassic Coast at all, love to hear from you. You can either drop a comment on YouTube, also you can join my Facebook group. If you've not already done so, head over to Facebook, tap in West Country Wanderings, request to join the group, and I'll come in and invite you into the group. And there you can share your own comments, indeed own photographs and videos that you may have taken along the Jurassic Coast too. That's all I've got time for today on West Country Wanderings. Hope to see you again very, very soon. All the best for now. Cheers now. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.